Hey y'all, this is Cindy. I'm the Tireless Tangler. I want to welcome all of you to the 2021 100 Days of Zentangle Project. Thank you all so much for being with me today. This is day one of our project and I hope all of you will continue to hang out with me through this journey. Our tangle today is going to be Akibia. It is by Mexico, one of Mexico's eight CZTs, Gloria Barrosio. And uh, it is very pretty flower base uh, tangle. And you guys can find the step out written for you on uh, tanglepatterns.com. All right, let's get started. This year, I'm going to try, I don't promise I won't change my mind, but this year I'm going to attempt to um, do the step outs on the tile. And if that becomes a problem for you guys, just let me know. I will try to show a picture of this tangle um, as we go and uh, so that you guys know sort of where we're going, okay? All right, so in Zentangle fashion, let's take a minute and deep breathe. Relax your arms and your shoulders and your hands. Try to close your eyes and get yourself into a place where you can be grateful. Grateful for the time that we have together today to draw and find something beautiful and joyful in our lives. All right, so let's start by placing our dot, our pencil dots on each corner of the tile. I am using an original Zentangle tile today. It is three and a half inches by three and a half inches. I believe that's nine by nine centimeters. Don't quote me though. And then we're gonna connect each one of these dots with a penciled line. It can be curvy, it can be straight. I think for what I wanna do today, I'm gonna to make them pretty straight, or at least straight for me. <laughs> My hand is trying to show off today. <laughs> All right. I've got a little bit of the shakes, but we're gonna keep going and see what happens. All right, Akebia is a plant-based organic type of a tangle that can also be put into a grid format. And so to show you sort of how the grid might work, um, I'm going to go ahead and step it out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put um, one of each, one Akiba, this is, um, it can be a focal point, it can be a grid, and it can be a sort of a free form organic type of a thing, and you can decide how you want to do it. But one of the prettiest things that I saw on her step out art on Tangle Patterns was uh, that she used it in corners as a border, which was very nice, and she ended up uh, inking around that and gave it a lot of drama. I really liked that version. Um, Another one, she has like put several on her tile and then connected them with little um, stem lines, little parallel lines. So let's uh, see what we're going to do today and see what happens. It is always a journey with me and thank you for being with me. All right. So I think uh, I'm going to step this out over here uh, in one of the corners first. And this tangle starts with an inked in little orb. And uh, she le left a highlight in hers. And all you have to do is leave one little dot of light. Now I like to do mine sort of in the corner and sort of um, like that. But you may do yours however you wish. The next thing you wanna do is draw some straight lines out to the sides of this. Okay, and then if you watched my uh, video on bales from last week, this is all we did on that. And so we're just gonna add these little rice shapes to each side of those lines, okay? Pretty simple so far, right? Now we're gonna do what I call a cloud in my head. I don't know what you wanna call it, but we're going to make a little poofy three, um, three bump little cloud up here. That's what I'm gonna call it. And so two smaller and one bigger in the middle, like this approximately. Then we're going to section this out and put some little flower flicks in here. 
That's my name for them. You can call them whatever you want to. Like so, yes. And the last, one of the last steps, or the next to the last step, is to draw a half circle from side to side. And then we're going to aura that. And you remember auraing is just a fancy way of saying to outline something. And then we're going to put a sparkle in this. And I'm going to make an easy sparkle, which is going to be the kind with the straight edges. And this is going to work just fine for what we're doing here. And I'm going to ink in the rest of this. And I just figured out what I was doing wrong here. And that is, of course, I started without my glasses on, which is never a good thing. Oh, it's always so much clearer with these on. All right. And as always, and especially this year, I'm going to preach about slowing down for inking. Because, of course, this is one of my issues. I get in a hurry. Just slow down and take your time, okay? And if you make a little mistake or a snafu, don't worry about it. Just keep going, okay? The last step to this tangle is to draw an aura around the entire thing, okay? This is, if we ink, it's going to give us some separation. Now, my hands are particularly shaky today, so I appreciate your patience with me. And just know, for those of you who also have trouble with shaking, it's okay. This art form is going to love you anyway. <laughs> That's a good thing. Especially good thing for me. There. So not so bad, right? And you can see that if, as we put one of these in each one of these corners, what a pretty little thing that's going to make, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my akebia in each corner. Let's see if I can do it approximately the same spot, but I don't promise because, well, <laughs> it's me. But we're gonna get it, and it's gonna turn out fine. All right. And add our rice shapes. Take your time, put in your little cloud bumps. Divide your petals, add your flower flicks. Which is always hit and miss with me. That's all right, I like them, okay? Now we're gonna add the half circle on the bottom. And aura. And add in your little sparkle part. Oops. Slow down, Cindy. Goodness. I think this would make an incredibly pretty uh, thank you card or any kind of card, really. Remember to turn your tile as you need to. Now, you may have the hand control that I do not and may be able to go around this all um, and have a nice result. I cannot. I have to reach, I have to turn my tile regularly or I really struggle because I don't have the same strength um, for all the strokes. Okay. Well, it's a little rough, but that's okay. Let's continue. Add your little rice shapes. 
Slow down, Cindy. There we go. Add my little bumps. I like doing this in the corner because it helps me not to get out of control with the size of those. But that may just be me. Some of you are incredible with your art and are getting amazing results. I have been on Instagram. I have been watching you guys. I just haven't been engaging very much. You guys know that social media is exhausting for me. So I tend to hide from it if I can. I keep trying to talk Mari into being my social media manager. He tells me I'm lame. <laughs> no, he doesn't. He said, what am I supposed to do? Mostly because I don't let him be, I, I have not let him on social media yet. A little young for that still. He's 11, my baby. 11 with an attitude. <laughs> In about 10 years, maybe we'll lose the attitude. I don't know. All right, and let's do the Aura. We'll just have one more. In this year's project, we probably will mostly do monotangles, but I reserve the right to add tangles uh, for enhancement if I decide that that's what it needs. So don't quote me. All right, one more. Just checking to make sure I turned the camera on. You guys know I do that. <laughs> so many times. And you guys can see that my lines are wiggling all over the place. They're uneven. It's not going to matter. This is gonna turn out very nicely, I hope. Okay, and divide your petals. Luria has another tangle um, out called Capullo, and I can't wait to try that. That is a grid tangle, and we will probably have a go at that at some point. As always, you guys, whoops. <laughs> As always, guys, I want you to um, put in comments if there is a tangle that you want me to do. I don't promise I can do them all. Some of them uh, that I had requested last year belong to the pattern creator as far as they had a, an online lesson uh, that they, for money, that they had out. And um, so, of course, I can't do those. But if they are listed on Tangle Patterns, then they are fair game. I do try to stay within uh, the Tangle Patterns purview, although I think last year we might have had one or two that were not in Tangle Patterns, and I know we had one from the year before where I just requested the pattern creator allow me to use their step out, they did. That was very kind. But um, for the most part, uh, the tangles that I choose will be from Tangle Patterns. It's not because I'm stuffy. <laughs> it's just that um, I feel like now, let's see, how can I be politically correct and say this? I feel like some of the other ones that are out there are basically the same tangles as, as we have on Tangle Patterns, and I don't see the need to slap a different name on it because you did an embellishment. So, there you go. <laughs> I'm just going to say that and leave it there. Okay, so this is what we have um, so far, and I could have made these bigger. For example, I could have um, put a dot dividing these halfway like this, and I could have done them large across each side. Does that make sense? And it would have filled up more of this, but uh, however you would like to do this, that is your art and you decide, okay? My job is to show you the tangles and encourage you to, to draw with me, all right? Now, um, what to do next? 
I think that I might want to add some smaller ones here and there and sort of connect these uh, with these little lines. <clears throat> um, be sure you check out her, her pattern art or maybe... I think I'm going to do a large one in the center. Remember that even though we're tangling on a small surface, that the opportunities uh, for drawing large are absolutely there. And drawing large is a great option. Let's see if I got those about the same length. I think so. Of course, once I draw the rest of it, they'll change. I hope you guys have had a wonderful holiday, and if you're sucked like mine, I am hopeful that 2021 is going to give us a much better time of it than we had in 2020. I'm trying to get these the same height, and I'm horribly, horribly off. That's all right, too. I want you guys to embrace the problems as well as the good things. And understand that this is, whoops, <laughs> this is not about perfection. This is about taking your time and relaxing and learning some fun things that can make art enjoyable for you. If you're anything like me, I always wanted to draw. I never really had that talent, although I learned later that I did. I just um, didn't have the confidence, I guess, for it. But this is about building your confidence and your self-esteem as we go. And you will find that all of the things in the past that might have been barriers or blocks to your being an artist are going to be gone with this method. You don't have to worry about where you start. You don't have to worry about what to draw. If you can't draw your cat, it's okay. If you can't draw your dog, that's less okay. No, I'm just kidding. It's fine. Just follow the pattern steps. Go stro one stroke of the pen at a time, and you will find the patterns work. Some of them are a little bit more difficult and take some practice. Some of them are quite easy. but they're all going to turn out. And if they don't turn out the way the pattern was intended, look at what you've done and see if there isn't something that you can do a little bit differently and make that pattern be your own. A lot of times we call that process of making something new out of something that's already there a tangulation. Or, <laughs> or if I'm any Oka and I call it a tangliation. She's cute. <laughs> All right, I'm talking about CZT, Annie Oaken, who is my friend and mentor and art teacher. All right, so this is what I have now. Um, we could ink this all, but as we've learned, I do not have the patience for that, unless I used a huge uh, marker or something, and I really, do I want to do that? I don't. So what I'm going to do, I think, is add in some... I think I'm going to add in some some of these sort of faux, these little parallel lines from one to the next. And I'm just going to make them go where they want. And... That. Let's see. Um. Let's do a little holaba action and try drawing some of these behind. 
Those of you who watched my last week's video for beginners are going to know what this is. Let's do another one. Those of you who have been watching me for a while are going to notice that my easel has a new top. So last year when the ice storm hit <laughs> and I had nothing to do and all we had was candlelight, I was drawing on my easel top by candlelight, trying to keep myself from going absolutely nuts. We went almost two weeks with no power and uh, 13 days, I think, we were out. And uh, when we turned, when it finally came back, we had to replace the electrical panel and our refrigerator uh, needed repairs and so did our dryer. And so it ended up being horribly expensive. Of course, our car did not fare much better than anything else, but it's 25 years old and that dent in the top isn't gonna matter. <laughs> All right, let's put another one here. I'm just going to divide this area up with some sort of stimmy hollaball looking things and just sort of take up some room here. Fill this space just a little bit more so it doesn't look so stark. Again, this is your art. You get to decide what you're going to do with it. If you don't like these and you wanna ink in all the uh, extra space, go for it. All right, so I have basically, I think this is where I'm going to stop as far as um, the line work goes. Now I want to talk about um, embellishing or tangle enhancers. What can we do to this to make it a little bit more interesting? So, of course, my very first start is line weight and rounding with tangle enhancers, and I think this... Um, this particular piece is going to uh, do well with some rounding. So let's just take off some of these sharp corners here. Just fill them in. All I'm doing is doing a little, little partial curve there. And I'm gonna add a little more ink to my Ara line. Whoops, Simba is shifting here. For those who do not know, Simba is my service dog. Although he has forgotten <laughs> what that meant. He can still pull me up, that's not a problem. That, that, is, that is and was what we trained him for. But um, yeah, he's much more of a lap dog now than a service dog. That's all right, that's all right with me. Okay, I do like that. By adding some uh, extra weight with your ink here, you are, um, you're adding a little bit more separation between this and whatever, if anything, we do in the background. Okay, I do like that. What about, let's go ahead and round while I think about this. I frequently, while I'm editing these videos, I frequently go back and, and do some embellishing and some um, special special work, extra work with lines and and line weight, um, rounding, all of the tangle enhancing things. And I keep adding up until I'm ready to photograph it. So I try to, um, I try to um, put the finished picture on there for you so you guys can tell what I added. So that'll be at the end of the video. Now you can see that I'm not great with this line work or with the rounding and, and um, adding weight 
Um, because of my shaking hands, I tend to be all over the place with that, but I still do it a lot anyway. So, um, yeah. You may find this helpful. You may not like it, and you don't have to use it if you don't. This is a technique that shows up constantly in my art and many others' art. This is, again, called a tangle enhancer, which is something that you can do to your tangles to make them more oomphy. That's my technical term. Oomphy. Makes them have more power, more passion, more drama. Some of your corners may not be as good, well-suited to this as, as others, but just do your thing. How are you guys doing coping with COVID? Our state supposedly has vaccines and then they said they didn't and then, yeah. So it's been a mess. It's been a mess. The United States is a mess. I think everybody else knew that already. I hope that all of you are, are who are trapped inside are hanging in there. You are being safe and taking care of yourself. I know, as someone who is also isolated, I know how difficult that is. I know how hard it is. But I want you guys to hang in there and keep after it. I know that that uh, I struggled over the last few months a lot getting over all of the stuff that had happened uh, before the end of the year and then uh, not having any Christmas with family, and um, it was, it, you know, that whole thing sucked, and I know that, of course, we're not the only ones struggling with that. Lots and lots of people didn't get to see their families this year for the holidays uh, here in the States for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, and I know Canada has Thanksgiving like the month before us or two months before us or something like that. And so I know that this is not just in this country. This is all over the world. And I want you guys to know that you're not alone. And we're here. We're all here. For the next hundred days, I'm going to be here. And as always, that's going to be tough. Stress-wise. Uh, Mari is in school now two days a week, which is very frightening for me. Well, goodness, Cindy. <laughs> See, guys, we do make mistakes. It's what are we going to do about it? That's the question. So I have made a mess on several of these inside with my ink pen. Okay. And so my question now is, how can I look at this differently? What could I do to uh, fix that? And I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my jelly roll <laughs> right there to take that out. That's what I'm going to do. That's one of my... One of my naughty tricks. But I did see Maria Thomas do it once, so that was okay. It, but it wasn't a mistake. <laughs> she did it on purpose. That was fine. Okay. Maria Thomas, by the way, I talk about a lot. And Rick Roberts, they are the founders of the Zentangle Method. And um, that is something that has changed my life. Okay. So I have the choice now. I can fill each of these sections here that I made with my curvy halibut, um with something else, with a different tangle. I could put printant in several of these. That would work very well. Um, I could ink all of them or some of them. Uh, so I have decided to try some tipple first, and uh, that is a basic tangle or fill. Okay, so I am really struggling with allergies today, so if I had to stop and sneeze, don't get worried. I do not have COVID. It's just allergies. All right, so what I have decided to do in here is some tipple, at least to begin with. I may add some printemps, uh, depending, but um, let's do some tipple. Tipple is just done with little orbs. 
and you can push them up against each other like this and just fill the whole space. That is tipple. Now, um, this is a common fill, which is why I chose it. I have considered, and I frequently overlap mine, but it doesn't matter. You can do it how you like. I tend to start with the small spaces and move out. It's going to give us a better idea of, of uh, how it's going to look. I encourage you to take your time with this. Don't get in a hurry just because they're all little balls. Or little um, perps or orbs or whatever you want to call them. They're definitely not circles because uh, that is impossible for me to do. <laughs> they don't want people worrying about drawing a, a perfect circle or anything like that. They're not circles. They're orbs because we're humans and uh, making a perfect circle is, you know, pretty impossible without a tool for us. Now, when you have a little bit bigger space to fill, you might want to make your tipple a little bit bigger. But if you want to make them all small or large, you can. For that matter, you could put one big one in here and ink around it. That doesn't matter. It's all, all good. I think you're going to find, even though... Um, uh, speaking for myself, I'm going to find that even though um, I have been a bit messy with my pen and have some stray marks here and there, once we get everything in there, it's going to look really cool, okay? So just go through and find your little spots where you need some filling, and you do not have to do this, and again, you can ink this if that's what you like. But because I have trouble with um, big sections of inking still, I'm trying to be more zen with my smaller sections, but the big sections are still tough for me. So again, they don't have to be perfect, guys. Just do the best you can. And it's all going to work out. Take your time. This is not a process meant to be rushed. This is a process meant to relax. And if you will, if you will focus not on worrying about what's going on or what you've got to do in a minute. Just focus on each one of those little orbs, drawing it in, and then inking around. Okay. Just like this. And already this is more dynamic, isn't it? Now, in some of these bigger sections, I may change my mind and do something else, but I think that this is going to work really well, and I'm not going crazy putting these in, so that's, that's, a, that's a win for me. And as we finish up today, I will show you my little jelly roll trick. If, for those of you who have not seen me do that before, lots of people do this. Lots of people do not. Um, most of the really of the artists that I really admire uh, leave every snafu or stray mark or whatever, and they leave it confidently. They don't worry about it, and quite frankly, they're good enough to where I don't worry about it either. But anybody whose art you look up up at up close, you're going to see little flaws, and we say, don't worry. Because, you know, flaws are part of our everyday world, and learning how to deal with flaws is, is a part of maturity. Learning how to deal with your inadequacies is part of being a mature person. And so, you know, look at these as opportunities. That was a very hard concept for me, I will admit it. But I can say that I truly believe it now. 
when I stopped worrying about competing with everybody else and stopped worrying about the fact that my art wasn't as good as theirs. <laughs> it takes a lot of pressure off you. Let's see, what else? So you guys tell me in comments, um, not only do I want to know what tangles that you would like to see in the 100 Days Project, but tell me um, what you think of each of the tangles. Also tell me if it was difficult for you or easy. And uh, I'd also be curious to know what type of tangles that you really enjoy. Do you like the organic patterns? Um, or do you like... Um, botanical things? Do you like the grid patterns? Do you like straight lines? Do you like wavy? What do you like? What what gives you your best zen flow when you are drawing? What what helps you reach your place of, of relaxation and zen? These are the things I want to know. I also, since this is day one, I also really want you guys to introduce yourselves to me. Tell me where you're from. You can do that in comments. Uh, if you are wanting me on social media, <laughs> good luck. I don't like social media. It overwhelms me, quite honestly, and I so I have issues with that. However, I would want us to have the opportunity to share our art with each other. And so um, what I do is have you guys get on Instagram. If you don't have an account, um, please make one. Um, if you need help, in last year's 100 Days project, I did a tutorial, or was it a different project? I probably need to do another Instagram tutorial, but um, um, it teaches you how to set up Instagram and get on uh, Find Me and um, how to post your art and all of that good stuff. So, But anyway, the tutorial will, will help you. Um, I know that a lot of you are my age or older and probably feel the exact same way as I do about social media, which is, it overwhelms me. I, I, I'm I not the multitasker that I used to be, and I used to be quite a good multitasker, but uh, the older I get, the harder that is for me, and, and social media is, is just, ugh, I struggle. And then, of course, when I'm overwhelmed, that's the first thing that goes. So be patient with me if you're young. If you're not, then you probably understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> and we'll just go from there. All right. Any fixing of things I do will be at the very end, so don't fret. All right. Interesting. Now, I may leave some of these blank, and I'm not going to mind that so much now that we've got a few things going on in here that are interesting. Uh, I think I'm going to do, let's see, I think I'll leave this blank and this blank and do this bigger one here. I'll leave that blank and that blank. I would also love to know if you guys are beginners or experienced tanglers. I know some CCTs uh, follow along this project, and I really appreciate you guys. And um, I appreciate you guys keeping me on the straight and narrow because I am human like everyone else. I, um, I get frustrated and down on myself sometimes. And so sometimes you guys are really good at putting me back uh, where I need to be emotionally, and I really appreciate those things. When you're saying, Cindy, you're being too negative, that's okay. Do that. I am a work in progress. I try very hard to be a positive person. But, you know, when things are so tough at home and um, in life for us right now, all of us are struggling with something, I'm sure. And I know I want to give a shout out to Julia Mack. Uh, who is back at work finally after nearly a year, I think she said, off from COVID because of COVID. So 
Good for you, girlfriend. I hope everything is going well. If you guys are back to work, um, Lynn Ware, are you back to work? Actually, I'm not sure Lynn watches these. Not Lynn. Who am I thinking of? Who am I thinking of? I don't know. Drawing and talking can be a real challenge. <laughs> so I am weird and quirky. That isn't going to change anytime. So I hope you guys can accept me for who and what I am. Now, what I think I'm going to do in these little outer sections is I think I'm going to put some floating tipples in there just to sort of tie everything together. And so I'm going to start with a big one and then put some small ones and have them float up into the air. These are messy orbs. Shame on me. Just wherever you want them. And I think that's what I'm going to do on my outer sections here. Now, <laughs> one other thing I want to mention to you guys. If you have problems making, making your orbs cleanly, like, for example, if you have issues, let me zoom in, where you've overshot or undershot or whatever you're doing with with your little orbs this is an impatience issue focus on the end point or the start point as you come around the slower i go the more uh, nicely rounded and um, together this is So take your time when you're, if you're going to do this kind of thing, take your time. And I am sorry about my stuffy nose. At least I'm not sneezing anymore. <laughs> okay. Let's do one more here. Not sure, show... Ugh, I'm not sure I'm showing you how cool this effect can be, but um, I'm going to do it anyway. We'll see. We'll see where we end up. Slowly watch that point where you started as you come around. When Maria Thomas draws her orb, she redraws she continues on when she after she gets to the start point continues on and redraws a little bit and i i have trouble with that <laughs> because then my my lines don't match up but that may help you slow down These tipple are escaping. I'll put some up here. Slow down, Cindy. You're getting those sloppy ones again. Now, sometimes when your pen is new, that's, you know, problematic. I want them to look sort of randomly um, interspersed, but I'm not sure that I can do random. This is all we're looking for here. Just a little bit of interest and it doesn't have to be perfect. And if you wanted to make this even uh, more different, you could ink all of these in and leave little highlights if you wanted to. But wow, what a difference does that make? I think I'll put a few more over here. Slowly. 
And if we continue, you're going to get Simon and Garfunkel from me again this year. It, for those of you who are too young to know who Simon and Garfunkel was, were, whatever, shame on you. <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel was uh, around when the Beatles were around. They are a great group. Were a great group. Duo. And they had a lot of songs that you will recognize if you hear them, I'm sure. They were big like the Beatles. Not Probably not Beatles big, but pretty big. I wasn't alive for the Beatles, so I don't know, but I know they were a big deal. Well, I was alive. <laughs> we don't need to talk. We don't need to discuss that, though. Anyway, the song I'm talking about from Simon and Garfunkel is 59th Street Bridge. And it goes, slow down, you move too fast. Ba -da -da -da. You gotta take the mo what? You gotta make the moment last just kicking down. The cobblestones, do, 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 do. feeling groovy. All right, that's all my singing. Okay, so um, I sort of like this. Um, I've got some a little bit of cleanup to do here and there, not too much. I think I will leave these blank as are, and as they are, and. Uh, I am sort of thinking about adding some color, just a little bit of color to my dots. But um, for now, uh, let's uh, do some shading. Um, on the beginner's video, I used my uh, Zentangle pencil. Um, this is the pencil that I normally like to use when I tangle. It is an F pencil. Um, it is uh, Mars Lumograph by Stedler. And uh, this is a great pencil because the graphite content in it is less. Uh, it's still pretty soft, but it is less um, graphite-y uh, than graphite-y <laughs> than the, um, than the uh, Zentangle pencils. And so since I am a dark shader, um, that, is my, that is my thing. All right. So... I'm going to start by giving some color where these are coming and going underneath here. I'm just gonna add a little bit and hope that I don't have that whole hand jerking thing going on. <laughs> it's always problematic. All right. So I'm going to start here. This enhances that feeling of going behind. You add a little shadow here on either side of these sort of halibut type things. It really enhances the dimension and the 3D quality. Even though you have tipple right up against there, you're still going to want to shadow that. It is a dreary day in Oklahoma today. Rainy and dreary, and we haven't seen the sun in several days. Now, when you've got ink right up here next to it, don't don't worry about putting any any shading there. All right, let's let Simba settle. Oh, I forgot some spots for tipple over there. If you got a blank spot, though, go ahead and shade all the way, the way we did on our hollow ball the other last week in the video if you watched it. 
If not, and you're a beginner to Zentangle, I really, really strongly encourage you to either watch my beginner's video or watch the Zentangle Project Pack A1 from last week on Tuesday. Uh, that is here on, on YouTube. And uh, they do the exact same tile um, as mine or I did the exact same tile as theirs, depending, I guess theirs came out first, so uh, that's the thing. I had intended to do that lesson anyway for my Zentangle beginners before we started the 100 day project so that you guys would know what Aura's and Drawing Behind and all of that stuff is about and have an introduction to grid tangles. And so um, if you are a beginner, uh, to tangling, then please um, do yourself a favor, either watch my video or watch the one with Molly Hollibaugh and her daughter Mazzy. Um, that's a great uh, way of illustrating that kids can do this too, and uh, they enjoy it, especially the ones with an artistic streak, but it relaxes them and is a really good cool down activity or a relaxation before you get uh, busy or whatever you want to use it for. It is great for kids too. Uh, I was reading, uh, I think it was in the Zentangle uh, newsletter letter, and if you guys don't um, follow that, you should. Uh, go to Zentangle.com and sign up uh, for their newsletter, and then you will know when everybody else does when they have new tangles coming out, which they have a new tangle that is that is just out today as I'm recording this a week ahead. And uh, I will be fitting that in, a step out for that in here soon. Um, it is it is uh, one of those tangles that is tough. Well, <laughs> it is deceptively simple. Let me say it that way. Sort of like Pinochle. Um, I had some of the same issues that I had with Pinochle, but I have worked through them. So I believe I am ready to, to uh, help you guys figure it out. Okay, it is called Narfellow, by the way, by, oh, a CZT, your last name, Rhea, I can't remember the first name. That's cool, though, that they gave us the opportunity as CZTs to help and name that. The CZTs usually get a, a heads up on new tangles a few weeks to a month before everybody else, but that we have the opportunity to teach them before they come public. All right. Now, that's my sort of peripheral shading. So the shading for this tangle, what can we do? Now, you don't have to shade it. It's beautiful the way it is. But I think uh, a little shading here and there would really make a big difference. So I think where I'm going to shade, and you may or may not do this, it is entirely up to you. I'm going to put a little shadow on the flower part on the outside of my little rice shapes. And I'm going to put some, some uh, graphite around the center here, trying to keep it off my highlight. And I think I'm going to put another shadow right here underneath. And then I'm going to stop here. So let's blend this a little bit and see how it looks. Uh-oh. <laughs> No, oh, here it is. I was afraid I lost my new tortillon. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? Just gradually draw that up into the middle, not too far. Side, how I feel about this. What do you guys think? Well, it does make it a bit more dynamic. I'm going to need to find my little mono zero, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Try to, to uh, pull out the tools that I'm going to be using a lot. And go ahead and blend some of the rest of this and sort of get an idea of where we're at. Shading takes time, just like every, just like the drawing does. Shading is one of the most important things that you can do for your art. 
to really make it dynamic. If you are not interested in shading, that is okay. Not everyone shades their, their Zentangle art. Um, that is fine if that is how you feel. Um, and it could be that uh, after drawing for a while, you decide, oh, that is something I wanna add, then you can always do that, right? And, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing your tiles and then and then coming back later and, and shading them if that's what you want. I have just learned, uh, mostly from any Oaken, that shading, shading is the difference between a very pretty sort of flat tile and a very dynamic um, 3D tile. And so I really try to add this where I can, but um, I'm not, um, I don't teach shading. I will do some shading on here at just from the Zentangle standpoint, but uh, I don't teach actual shading because I have learned all that I know from any Oaken and she has, um, I, that would be uncool of me to teach what she's taught me uh, for money to other people for free. That would be not cool. Plus, that's her intellectual property, and she should have it because she is an amazing teacher. So uh, if any of you come to the point where you want to take your art to the next level, then I highly recommend starting uh, lessons or joining Art Club with any. It's about, uh, I want to say it's maybe $35 a month now, and uh, um, for all of the lessons per month that she comes out with, and there is amazing amount of material that she includes and so many of my followers have gone over and found her for shading and then found the uh, wealth of lessons that she, I mean, <laughs> I have years of lessons that I have not yet had time to go through. I have been an art club member since the very beginning when she first started. Um, and it was just, it's just amazing to learn from her. She's one of the best teachers I've ever, ever had. And I have several degrees, so I've had a lot of teachers. All right, so the next thing I wanna show you guys, if I can put my hand on it real quickly, this, this, I wanna show you. This is a Tombow Mono Zero Elastomer Racer. Okay, the cool thing about this is it has this teeny tiny little tip, see? Uh, let me see if I can get you a straight on view of that. It's teeny tiny, okay? And it is the perfect thing for using on Zentangle Art to clean up stray graphite um, in tiny little spots that we have in our art. So uh, a lot of people use these, a lot of people don't. It's really your choice. But as messy as I get with my graphite, it is always nice for me to have a way to lift uh, the extra off. That is another reason why I use, I use the F pencil because I get crazy. <laughs> I get crazy. So I'm gonna lift a little bit of this off the top. And you do wanna be really careful and be gentle. Um, this will pull the tooth up. Erasing pulls the tooth up on your paper. And this paper, if you're using an original Zentangle tile, is worth, is worth money. So, um, you know, you wanna be very, very gentle if you choose to use an eraser on your stuff. And you probably shouldn't do what I do and, and flick it off because you're just gonna draw I'm just gonna move that graphite all over the place, but you know me. <laughs> you know me. Okay, so I'm going to re-emphasize right here. I want this to be a little bit thinner. I don't know that I will ever finish the top of my easel. <laughs> May start a different one there. Okay. okay, guys, so as I was editing this video and winding it up, I got an itch to put some color in this tile, and so I did. I just dabbed a little bit with colored pencil here and there and um, sort of mixed it, it up, mixed, it, <laughs> mixed it up and blended it out. And so uh, this is what I end up with. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video, and I am going to see you all tomorrow. Thanks for being with me.